Hey guys, Secret Passes Productions here. Now, I bet you're wondering what I'm doing here in the bathroom. Well, you see, I'm getting a game from my collection of early 2000s PC license games. Ah, there it is. Please don't tell anybody how I live. The early 2000s were defined by two things, crappy PCs and licensed games, and nothing else. Kids and non-tech savvy families usually had either really old computers or really cheap ones. These same non-tech savvy families usually bought licensed games for their kids. Go figure. The problem is, if little Timmy puts his new game in his Commodore 64 and the game doesn't run, the oblivious dad would most likely take it back, thinking the game is broken. To fix this problem, developers of licensed games would often make a totally new game for the PC, even if there's a console version. This PC version was always inferior, and had bad graphics and less complex gameplay. Now, of course there are some exceptions to this rule, like The Simpsons Hit and Run, but a game that wasn't an exception was Jimmy Neutron vs. Jimmy Negatron. This game was actually a PC version of a Game Boy Advance title. I mean, even the weakest and cheapest PC should be better than a Game Boy Advance, even considering the day and age. So this has to be better, right? Right? N no, it doesn't. Doesn't it? Okay, I hate my life. Well, uh, this... This looks like a game, maybe? Uh, oh, oh no, oh... Please, God, no. Oh, oh no... Oh, did you hear that narrator? Oh, but it can be. And somewhere, in another dimension, things are different. Very different. Yeah, he never comes back. Really love the typing going on there. Keyframing is the superior form of animation. Jimmy Neutron is proof. <laughs> Herman! I know. I'm an imbecile. Go lock myself in the broom closet. What the hell did that robot do wrong? All he was doing was laughing. I smell an abusive relationship side plot coming on, you know, because it's Jimmy Neutron and all. Back with the typing and the lip sync now too. Excuse me! Huh? Uh, huh? Oh, sorry, what is it? Just what are you planning on doing now? Apparently the ball is set very low for this game. Yes, yes master! <laughs> Command me again! Command me again! I'm just gonna give you a couple seconds to take that in. Oh shit, earthquake! Oh, okay, it's done. We find out we have to deactivate an electric gate thingy. The only button to deactivate- <laughs> Wait, 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 okay, hold on. You may be wondering what this is. Um, Masters of Sex? Or what does this have to do with the video? Well, while I was looking for the soundtrack for this game, I accidentally stumbled upon something interesting. All of the music in the game is stock music, which isn't that interesting as is because you know it's a low budget game so it's pretty normal the music in the game is highly compressed so i want to get the source luckily the person who uploaded the rips to youtube they put a link to a playlist in the description that has the originals like i mean in the original quality not the stupid compressed mono quality that's in the game and um the music has been used in some interesting properties since, um, Victoria's Secret one Runway music, um, freaking Masters of Sex, it, it, it's interesting, but when you see a weird title of a, uh, of like a band or a song or something, just, just keep in mind that is music in the game, it's just better quality. Back to the video. The electric gate is behind the electric gate. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Gato can obviously fly. Why can't Gato just hit the button? And why can he move with WASD, the arrow keys, and the mouse all at the same time? What is this game? Oh, and did you think that somehow you could change the graphics settings or at least the resolution? <laughs> no. 
You can change the difficulty to hard though, which I ended up doing. Now the goal is to find parts to make something to hit the button. Okay, now Gato's just really frustrating me. One of the many things Evolution has blessed Jimmy Neutron with is the ability to jump and land at an angle, and stay at that angle, even though it makes no sense. What? Oh, what are you looking at? What are you doing? Oh, oh, that's what you're looking at. Anyway, you go through this level where I guess the goal is to go fast, but all I was trying to do was see how I can screw with the physics. Wait, wait, play that back. Why is the sound of Jimmy hitting his head on a rock the sound of metal on metal? I guess Jimmy has a steel plate and the rocks are made of steel. Oh, oh, oh wait, this game doesn't make sense, never mind. I should have known. The door to the crane controls is- A low quality texture. This is a linear platforming level, like most other levels. There are some extra things you can find, but they don't require any skill to get to. They just require you to step off the beaten path a bit. The controls are a thing. I guess it's kind of hard to explain them. Due to Jimmy's small legs, fall damage is a huge issue. If a platform is too low, you're dead. But due to the fact that checkpoints are everywhere and there are no real repercussions for dying, it's fine. The game will often insist on having these boxes that are just high enough so you can't jump onto them. So you have to do this little climbing animation. My question is, why? Why could they not just lower the boxes? It makes no sense and adds no challenge. All it does is, well, nothing. The coders could have spent more time fixing this, or this, or this, or this, but nope. Let's put a climbing animation in, that's obviously the better idea. After I spent far too much time trying to jump onto this pelican, which was unfruitful, I go underwater in this sub and oh my god the controls here are ass. I keep on running into shit because it's so odd, the controls, I just can't quite explain it, but it's slow and tedious. Luckily, to help the tediousness, Jimmy will explain every little thing you have to do. There's an opening in this door. Looks like it's made to hold some kind of stone or crystal. Okay, let's go find it. Look, in that building, it's a crystal. Let's try to get in there. We've got the crystal. Now let's go open that door. We need to move the rocks from that doorway with the sub's grabbing claw. Something useful in that ship. Maybe even some treasure. We need to move the rocks from that doorway with the sub's grabbing claw. After that, I guess the real game starts because you get into a hub to explore. Really nothing to do though. I was just jumping around aimlessly and I got teleported into a level though, so that's a thing you can do I guess. This level is supposed to be an exhibit in a museum, complete with tedious platforming, actual tornadoes, something that should be in more museums to be honest, a color puzzle, potentially priceless artifacts that Jimmy apparently has no problem stealing, this life-sized pyramid that, guess what, is another tedious platforming section, and only has one set of bathrooms. Very disappointed. Negatron takes the liberty of kidnapping Jimmy's parents and putting them inside of tombs. Yeah, a fifth grader puts two full-sized adults into tombs. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll stop questioning the ass-backwards logic. Anyway, you go to vest- Okay. okay, okay, enough of this fucking tomb. Next level it is. Oh, this one looks really promising. The goal here is to fly around and shoot food into Carl's mouth. For the next level, I'm not even going to say a word. I'm just going to show you two 5 second clips and you'll get the gist. The next level, or levels, depending on what you call it, is you having to chase down and bump into Negatron three times in three different holidays, Halloween, Christmas, and 4th of July. 
Now if you're over the age of 6 minutes, you can probably muck Neutron within seconds, which is strange because the developers made this big level with secrets and everything, and for practically no reason you don't get to see it. Look at this! The level even branches out into other levels! Or... not? Why have these things here if all they do is lead to invisible walls? I guess the developers didn't expect people to explore the level, but then again, by logic, the developers didn't expect people to open the EXE, so who knows. After you're done the level, you get to go home, where you can do many fun activities like clipping out of bounds and trying to clip out of bounds again. You don't spend much time in the house though, as you get to go to the first part of the last level, where you get to fight that robot. There was a whole side plot about him that I didn't go into detail with because it didn't matter, but you get to fight him. To fill up your bar, which is the only timely way to actually get ammo, you have to run around this small level looking for soda, which is worse than it sounds. On top of that, one shot blows your entire load and you have to start over. Is it tedious? Yes. Is it easy? Yes. But most importantly, is it fun? No. When you finally beat the kinky fuck, you get to go to the last level. This is by far the most visually interesting level, but the platforming is the same shit you've been putting up with all game. Now we've seen a lot of lazy shit throughout our experience, but this one has to take the cake. There's this invisible wall that's supposed to stop you from going to the conveyor belt of slum or flip or whatever this is. The problem is, the invisible wall is just a little off, to the point where you can actually jump the barrier and be stuck between the invisible wall and the barrier. Now granted you can get out really easily, I'll bet this wasn't supposed to happen. My problem here is that the devs could have just moved it a tiny bit and there wouldn't be a problem, but I guess that was too hard. On the plus side, we do get to enjoy this beautiful camera action. The goal here is to shoot the black fluff and let all the other fluff get by. No comment. I tried to do this while in between the invisible wall and actual wall, just to hope that some really cool shit would happen, but no. All I got was a seizure and the normal game ending. Oh, but then you have to kill all these fucking dinosaurs, but they recycled the level and kind of the concept from the color levels, so I don't give a fuck. After that, you get the most satisfying end game ever. Taking the game out of your disk drive and forgetting it exists. Now, do I recommend you play this game? Of course not. I mean, if you're looking for glitches, you may get a kick out of it because, you know, I went out of bounds without even trying, so there's bound to be a bunch of other stuff you can uncover. So yeah, Jimmy Neutron gets 3 Mega Nuts out of 10. Thanks for watching.